do another example and in this example rather than looking at a project <coughs> and determining whether we should go ahead with it or not go ahead with it we're going to look at a choice between two options that we have and we have to select one of them this is a situation in which there's a business that runs a ferry it has a current ferry it can keep its ferry now improve it upgrade it maintain it and uh, operate it for 10 years or it could just sell it and buy a new one and operate that for 10 years so the uh, book sort of lays out the example as we see here uh, here is buy the new ferry and all the calculations that are involved with that and here is to keep the old ferry and all the calculations involved in that so um, one of the things that it calculates for us first is under the new ferry we can see that our revenue is 400,000 if we kept the old ferry, it would still be 400000 But look at the change in operating costs. Under the old ferry, it would be $300,000 in operating costs for uh, an annual cash inflow of 100. But if we get the new one, our costs drop 30%. They drop to 210000 so our net annual cash flows increase to 190. But we got to buy a new boat. So let's have a look at, what, uh, at how they've modeled it here. So the initial investment we see here is 360000 uh, the net present value of 360 today is 360. Repairs in five years are 30,000. So there's the net present value of the repairs in five years. Net annual cash inflows, the 190,000 for years one through 10, come to a net present value of 991,062. Then they take the salvage value of the old ferry. We can get 70,000 for it now. Notice the word now here on, on both these terms. And look at the net present value they're identical to what it is now because at time t equals zero net present value is now it is what it is and finally the net present value uh, so the salvage value of the ferry in 10 years we can get 60,000 which is the same as 16,000 today so buying the new ferry has a net present value of 701666 we want to compare that to keeping the old ferry notice now that we're going to spend two hundred thousand dollars now so the net present value is 200. We're going to spend another 80,000 in five years. So we have a negative net present value on that. One years one through 10, we're going to generate 100,000 in revenue, net present value that, and our salvage value's net present value for 292, 248. Notice that the uh, new ferry greatly outweighs keeping the existing ferry by a total of 405,418 in net present value. The decision is simple. Let's sell the old boat. Let's buy the new one. Sure, it's going to cost us a little bit more money now, but we will make more over the course of these 10 years measured in today's dollars. Now, let's see how we do that on a timeline, and you'll see that it, uh, it, it uh, sort of jumps out as much simpler on the timeline as opposed to doing all of these things. The timeline with Excel. Let's have a look at that. Well, let's see how we would do this on a timeline. And we have Project A versus Project B, just some generic headings. In this case, it's buy a new boat or keep the boat. Uh, and we're going to do it with two methods, a total cost approach and an incremental cost approach. And once I do it on the timeline, uh, you'll see that the incremental cost approach uh, is super easy. So let's start with this one. Uh, what's our story here? Well, we have a 10-year story. And, of course, we have our uh, we'll put our years in for the 10 and the story to keep the boat says well if we spend two hundred thousand dollars today we will generate a cash flow of one hundred thousand dollars for the next 10 years however we will have to spend eighty thousand dollars after year five to maintain the boat and then we can sell it for sixty thousand dollars once it's done look how easy that was We'll spend two hundred thousand today. We'll generate a hundred thousand dollars in each of these. The, each of the yellow ticks will generate a hundred thousand in each of those years. In year five, we will have to spend another eighty thousand to uh, maintain the boat, and then we can sell it in ten years for sixty thousand. Now we're ready to model it in Excel. So in Excel, we're going to use two cells this time, rather than one cell, so that we can see the difference in, in our cash flows. All all cash flows at time t equals zero will go into the first cell. So we will enter negative 200,000. So there's the first cell of Excel. Whatever cell that's in, enter negative 200,000. In the next cell, I'm not going to close it because I'm going to use more than that. We will enter equals net present value. Our discount rate we know is 14% from the previous example. And our cash flow at the end of the first year, 
Second, third, and fourth are all the same, 100,000. There's first year. Second year, do the same thing. Third year, do the same thing. Fourth year, do the same thing. Our fifth year cash flow is 100 minus 80 is only 20,000. And then we go back to 100,000 for year six. Year seven is the same thing. Year eight is the same thing. Year nine is the same thing. And year 10, we have 160,000. Once you hit enter, you'll get a total. And then in your next cell down, you'll hit equals sum of the two, whatever it is. You click on this cell plus this cell. However you add the two cells together, you'll sum them together. And you will get 296, 248. There's your answer. There's the net present value of keeping the boat. We notice that it's positive. So just to be consistent, let's actually do this in Excel. The first thing we noticed was we had an outflow of 200,000. So there we go. Then we wanted to calculate net present value. And there's our net present value function here. We had a discount rate of 0.14. And then we want to model our cash flow. So we have 100,000 in the first year, 100,000 in the second year, 100,000 in the third year, in the fourth year. Now the fifth year, we don't. We have only 20,000 cash flow in the fifth year. The sixth year jumps back to 100,000. Seventh year, eighth year, ninth year, and the tenth year is 160,000. And we enter that and we get 492,000. And all we have to do is just click a quick sum. We get 296, 246. Is that what we should have gotten? Well, the book tells us we should have got 296, 248. This rounds off to 296, 247 almost. It's the right answer. It's just that we used a spreadsheet which carried digits to probably 16 digits, whereas uh, uh, the book might have just rounded off and used a calculator to round off. Here we go, 296, 246, using Excel. That's how we do it. Let's say you wanted to use a calculator instead. You're doing an exam, you don't have Excel in front of you, and you have to use a calculator to do this. Well, you can see that we can model this as three separate cash flows, right? Cash flow number one is just the negative 200,000. So you have negative 200,000. Uh, actually, you can't write it that way, sorry. You'll key it in, because this is calculator, so you'll key it in as 200,000, and then you'll make it negative first by hitting the negative button. Here's our initial investment, right? Now, anyone who's done any bond pricing notices that all we, what we have here is we have what looks like a bond at the top. This looks like a bond. This looks like our coupon payments plus the future value. So we can use bond pricing to do that. What's our N? Our N is 10. So t key in 10, hit N. Our IY is 14. So we hit 14 IY. Our future value is 60,000. Future value. Our payments are 100,000 PMT. And compute um, PV. Now when we compute the present value of this, Normally what you would get, we'd get our 500, we'd get, I'm just going to bracket it for you, 521, 612, plus 16185. You'd get the two together. I haven't added them yet, so give me a minute. Plus 16185. Your calculator will spit back to you 537, 797. So we have 200,000 negative plus all of this. Plus, we have one more thing. We have the $80,000 in five years. How do we deal with that? Well, that's a key in $80,000 divided by 1.14y to the x button. Five. You have to use your brackets now. In the order of operations, if you don't use your brackets, it'll take 80,000 divided by 1.14 and then y to the x that to five. We want 80,000 divided by 1.14y to the x5, right? So make sure you use your brackets. Equals, and you'll get 41.549. Remember now, this is a cash outflow, so you got to hit your negative button. So if you add all these up together, what do you think you're going to get? 296.248. So 
The big thing here is the 200 goes in as just 200. The 80,000, you'll uh, um, net present value that separately, and you understand that that's an outflow. We'll make that a negative. And all of the stuff at the top of the line can be modeled as a bond price. So you could just take, uh, say that the salvage value is the future value. Each payment is 100,000. Notice that we had to do the 80 separately because when you use your calculator, it assumes equal payments each time, that the coupon payment is equal each time. So we couldn't model it the way we could in Excel by making this 20,000. So if you're doing these problems on your own, use Excel. It's powerful. If you're in an exam situation and you don't have Excel uh, uh, available and you still have to solve one of these problems, using the timeline helps. And then just treat everything on top. Put all your positive cash flows on top of the line and treat that as an ordinary bond and use the present value keys on your calculator to price it out. There you go. All right, let's, uh, let's not re keep the boat. Let's replace the boat. And this is the uh, thing we're comparing it to. So we just need to draw out a timeline to, uh, to replace the boat. Well, the boat's going to cost us $360,000. But we can get $70,000 for the old boat today. So that means we're only going to spend $290,000 today. Our cash flows do change, though. We're going to get $190,000 in each of the 10 years that follow. For the next 10 years, we get $190,000 a year. In year five, we don't have to spend $80,000. We only have to spend $30,000 to fix this thing. And we're still going to get $60,000 salvage value for it at the end. So let's solve this with, uh, with Excel. Uh, remember with the calculator, the, the top of your line is really just, uh, just a bond. And remember I said anything at t equals zero, you'll model separately. Here's your bond on top, and you just have to discount one cash flow. So your calculator, I'm going to leave you to figure that out. But in Excel, uh, in your first cell, everything that happens at t equals zero. So you'll put equals 70,000 minus... 360,000. It's easy to see that that will end at 290,000. Then go down one cell equals net present value uh, 0.14, which is uh, uh, your discount rate. And you have 190,000 in year one. Same thing in year two, year three, year four. Year five is only 160,000. Remember, it's the net, right? 160. Uh, then we jump back up to 190 in year six. Year 7 was the same thing. Year 8 is the same thing. Year 9 is the same thing. But year 10 is 250. And there we go. In the next line, you'll equal sum, the sum of these two. And you will get 701,666. Notice that the net present value of replacing the boat is significantly higher than the net present value of replacing the boat now. Look how quickly that was. As I read the story, I was able to put in, well, cash is going out here, cash is coming in here, cash going out here, cash coming in here. Great, let's model it. All my T equals zero goes into one cell. Everything else goes into the net present value. If I were using my calculator, there's one number that I need. Here's my bond price on top, and I just need to discount this. Look at that, nice and simple. That's why I like the timeline, because everything is there for me. I can see it. Now, here's the powerful part of this. Let's say we want to do the incremental approach. Rather than looking at keep or replace, but the incremental approach. Well, the incremental approach, we just need a timeline. Right? There's our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's our 10 years. So in our incremental approach, we have uh, to replace, we have 290 under, uh, under replace. Negative 360 plus 70, so we're parting with 290. Under the keep, we were parting with 200. So the difference is we're parting with 90,000. Under replace, we get 190,000 a year for 10 years. Under keep, we get $100,000 a year for nine years. The difference is 90K. 90K over all those years. The salvage value, if we replace, is 60,000. The salvage value if we keep is 60000 Now notice that they both happen at 10 years. So they're both the same cash flow. We can ignore that. It's not an incremental difference. Well, what about the cash outflow uh, to repair? If we replace, we're going to part with $30,000. 
If we keep, we're going to part with $80,000. So what's the difference? Positive 50. Instead of parting with 80, we're now only going to part with 30. So we actually have a $50,000 cash inflow. This is, this, is for, this is the differential for buying the boat. I should write that down so that you understand what I'm comparing. This is to replace versus keep. And we're just looking at incremental costs. The incremental cost of replacing versus keeping is an initial outflow of negative 90. Why? Because it costs us 290 net to buy it today, but 200 to fix. So that's the net, 90. Why is this positive? That will mess you up. Why? Because if we keep, it would have been negative 80,000. But we're replacing, so it's only negative 30,000. So the incremental cost is actually 50,000 in our favor. It's a savings, so we model it on top. So, how do we model this in Excel? In your first cell, you'll e enter everything at t equals zero equals negative 90,000. Everything else it can be modeled in the net present value function, 0.14. And what is our cash flow? It's 90,000 in year one, year two, year three, year four, year five is 140, year six, year seven, oh sorry, I'm not, uh, I should get you back onto the 90, year six goes back to 90, year seven, year eight, year nine, year 10 is the same 90, notice there's no salvage value, and if you uh, uh, calculate that and you press the sum of that, you will find that the sum of this, I'll leave this to you to figure out, that the sum of this is the difference between the, the net present value of replacing the boat versus the net present value of keeping the boat. And there's the incremental approach, all done with timelines, which was nice and simple, two steps in Excel and you're done, right? There we go.